we look out 10 years, where are the changes going to be? What's going to be significant? So we'll look at some of the areas where there is uh, a significant trend or change and what that will look like in the future. So for data and connectivity, a couple key points there. Treasury aggregators are going to have great growth over this period of time. The idea that organizations need visibility to all of their bank accounts, all of their transaction, uh, continues to increase the adoption and the use of technology to see that. That will help treasury aggregators. By 10 years, over 90% of firms you know, above a billion dollars will have access to well over 90% of their accounts on a daily basis. This is where it's going to be. Uh, APIs, uh, Application Programming Interface for securing information about data, uh, for pulling information about transactions, uh, bank account information, etc., cetera, will, uh, will become very dominant uh, over that period of time. This is not just because of PSD2, the Payment Services Directive that requires that, uh, be, but that's going to be adopted in many other countries. This will have a major impact on information payments and the technology used to uh, look at bank accounts, transactions, information from banks. At this point in time, there are a lot of faster payment initiatives, same day or immediate payments, a lot of initiatives that are going on. Payment hubs will expand during this time period well beyond banks and non-bank financial institutions. Those organizations that have a tremendous amount of payments, uh, uh, a million a month, 10 million a month, are, most of them are using payment hubs. But due to the complexity and the continued globalization, we're going to see payment hubs expand very well beyond just that, that core sector that they're focusing on. We believe that over 60% of global multinational companies that are greater than $5 billion will have adopted sophisticated payment hubs and even 50%, over 50% of $2 billion plus multinationals, global multinational organizations, will use a payment hub. We think that SWIFT GPI will become well accepted during that time period, and they will continue to influence other channels and other payment methods because of the value added there wrapping around payments across borders. So GPI will grow. That will also have a, a response and an impact on other areas for payments. At least half of firms will have a Treasury security assessment every other year or more frequently. And 70% of $2 billion plus organizations will have a dedicated machine for payments, something that does not take email, can't browse additional websites. We're going to see at least that. Right now it's in the 2% the range. It's going to be over 50% by that time. For bank account management and eBAM, for bank account management, the best of breed systems are going to experience strong growth, certainly over at least the first five years. Treasury management systems are going to experience extremely strong growth in terms of their bank account management modules and the capabilities that they have. This strong growth, this extremely strong growth in the treasury management system space for bank account management is what will drive eBAM because more people will have the capabilities of eBAM within these systems that will drive eBAM use, uh, but it will drive it for global banks, um, you know, major national banks in, in some of the larger countries. It won't be with every bank, but we will see adoption over a 10-year period. Uh, over a five-year period, um, there probably will be some growth, but by 10 years, eBAM will become a reality. So in the area of risk visualization and additional analysis, this is going to be an area of continued rapid change over this 10-year period. There'll be continued growth and maturity of the tools that are used for analysis and visualizing risk, not only for Treasury, but for the rest of the organizations. People will be able to model many, many different scenarios and change their assumptions rapidly and be able to ask those questions and see how that will impact their balance sheet, their cash flow uh, over time and based upon these different dimensions. The use of business intelligence tools will have an impact in three areas. First, within systems. You can see increased reporting, better reporting within different treasury management systems and treasury risk management systems. That's going to continue to expand. That's a, a significant front-end visual tool uh, that makes, a, makes an impact in the sales of these organizations. So they will be doing that. Uh, they'll be making those changes there. Second, the use of these BI tools against sets of data 
that go beyond just what's in the Treasury system. So additional internal data uh, will progress. But what's most important and will have the biggest impact for leading organizations, it won't be widely adopted, but it'll be adopted by you know, well over a quarter of, of firms, uh, two billion or more, they'll combine internal data with external data to enrich the view. This enriched information will be combined uh, and allow more questions, more analysis. What's the impact of uh, a, a tsunami uh, impacting a reactor in a particular area of the world? What will that do with our supply chain? What about our banking partners? Uh, what will happen if uh, interest rates adjust? Um, combining external data, market data, internal data, data from treasury management systems will allow for much better visualization and faster analysis that the treasurer can do. They won't just have to ask for information uh, and wait for several days before uh, someone crunches it to be able to respond more rapidly. Now supply chain finance is an interesting area. Uh, they have been experiencing rapid growth. We'll see continued rapid growth. There's going to be consolidation in this area. Uh, there are multiple types that are available today, factoring, reverse factoring, etc. cetera. Uh, those are going to continue. There'll be additional capital uh, services where more banks, more liquidity providers can fit into these different vehicles. But most importantly here, I think the networks are going to be bigger. The networks are going to expand. So it won't just be with your direct business partners. It will push through to partners of your partners, your supplier suppliers, your customers customers. And the changes for the, the, the value of these networks is going to be driven by the value that's achieved. Um, banks will eventually uh, start to acquire more independent technology companies because they'll see the fit with their ability to leverage their, their balance sheet. Blockchain will be much more commercialized. There'll be some major disruptions uh, in different channels by using the distributed ledger technology. Uh, many banks are investing uh, money. Well over a billion dollars is invested uh, so far in different startups um, and there's, there's models that are being worked on today. So this will become much more disruptive. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, um, I firmly think that banks in the G20 will regulate and control Bitcoin. These cryptocurrencies uh, that are used for fraudulent activities or anom anonymous transactions are going to come under some level of governance. It's fair to say there's going to be a significant amount of changes over a decade. Technology is changing. The, the growth of millennials taking over leadership positions who are more familiar with technology uh, than some of the uh, people that are approaching retirement is going to create different expectations. This is going to impact you know, payments, connectivity, the ability to do analysis, and this will certainly help uh, Treasury do their job more effectively.